and therefore there is a positive flux contribution here because of the positive i hat and there is a negative flux contribution here due to the negative i hat. This is exactly what we saw already. So here I've written the, the uh, vector field as a sub x n and at the very top it's a sub x n. I probably should have uh, maybe um, this should be I don't know, I might call that capital N and I might call this small n. You know, it doesn't really matter. Now just in case that hasn't convinced you, and hopefully it does, I've written explicitly some of the flux uh, elements out here for a number of faces, in fact five faces, and you'll see that there's cancellation. That's not something I'm going to go through now, I'll just let you watch that if you like, or read through that if you like. So the sum of the flux through each face is really given by the flux at the last face and the flux at the first face. And because the unit normals are equal, or excuse me, are in the opposite directions, we're looking at the difference between them. So realistically, the flux is given by the difference in the value of the vector field at each point, multiplied by the surface area element, and it's in the, well in this case, it's in the i hat direction. Because we're holding x and, uh, or excuse me, holding y and z fixed and varying x. Now I'm going to incorporate a bit of a sleight of hand and I'm going to multiply and divide by delta x and I'm sure you can see why I'm going to do this. If I multiply and divide by delta x we're going to get a delta x, delta y, delta z up here. Well, that's going to be your infinitesimal volume element, volume element dv or d tau as I usually call it. And we're going to get some sort of a partial derivative as well. So Looking at this here, this is this is d tau, our infinitesimal volume element. Now delta x, what's delta x? That's nothing but let's say the value of x, the x at uh, whatever, I will say your, your your end point was, minus x at your start point. Now I know I'm saying x plus one or n plus one, but it's just the difference between two x's. It doesn't really matter which one they are. But because we are summing them, it's best to use the notation that I have at the bottom of the screen. So here we have, still we have our dx, dy, dz, or delta x, delta y, delta z, which will become our delta tau or d tau. Now delta x, because we're summing it, it's going to be x of n plus 1 minus x of n. And we're going to sum from n is equal to 1 to n is equal to capital N, which is the total number of faces, minus 1. And I'm sure you can convince yourself that this is in fact correct and makes perfect sense. If it doesn't, well then you can look at the calculation I've done here in gold and that should, uh, that should do it out more explicitly. That's something I'm not going to go through now though. The point here is that our flux, so the integral which we said can be given as the sum of the, the infinitesimal flux elements can be re rewritten in this form here which is equivalent to this form here. Now we're going to take we're going to use this particular form here. So we have the sum of small n is equal to 1 to small n excuse me capital N minus 1. We have the difference in the, the value of the vector field at the faces we divide it by the change in the x direction, we'll say, if we're, if we're looking along that direction. And we multiply it then, of course, by the infinitesimal volume element here. In the limit, where we our Riemann sum becomes an integral, of course, this is nothing but del a sub x dx integrated d tau. I'm going to call this equation number one. It should be pretty straightforward uh, to understand why this is in fact the case. It all stems from the fact that we could make this particular substitution or this particular uh, change up here. And like I said, if you're not convinced, look at the uh, explicit, um, explicit steps that are done here in gold. But the point is that expression number one is only the first of three parts of the integral. In other words, we kept y and z fixed and varied x. 
What happens if we keep x and y fixed and vary z? Or keep x and z fixed and vary y? Well, clearly we're going to get something similar. Just to recap, this is the expression we started with. But that's not something that uh, I'm sure you'll uh, need to look back on. The point here is that in the limit, our sum of co our re it's a Riemann sum. That's going to become an integral. We're going to get the integral with respect to the infinitesimal volume element d tau. Del a sub x del x, del a sub y del y, del a sub z del z. Well, that's nothing else but the divergence of the vector field A. And if you need to go looking at the divergence, look at my videos in Vector Calculus for Electromagnetism. And that's the divergence theorem. We've gone from a, a closed surface integral of A dot ds, and we've gone to the volume integral of the divergence of our vector field. This is one of the fundamental theorems for Vector Calculus for Electromagnetism. Without vector calculus, we really can't do any electromagnetism. So um, it's something that's very important and it's very useful to do. And I would suggest that if you understand the origins of the divergence theorem, it'll help you significantly in your future uh, ma mathematical analysis. So, thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. You might also click on universityphysicstutorials.com. Thanks for watching.